One of Governor Kathy Hochul's top priorities for 2024 is expanding swimming opportunities for New Yorkers around the state. And to that end, the Democratic leader is championing the build out of municipal pools, addressing the state's lifeguard shortage and investing in floating pools at natural bodies of water. For more on the governor's proposal, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Sharon Greenberger, president and CEO of the YMCA of Greater New York. Welcome to the show, Sharon. Thank you. And we're also joined by the organization's Senior Vice President for Public Affairs, Sharon Levy. Thanks for joining us, Sharon. Thanks for having us. So in the interest of full disclosure, uh, my earliest swimming memories are at the YMCA in Saratoga Springs, uh, but I don't think my experience is unique. So can you talk about the swimming opportunities that YMCAs really all over New York uh, provide today? Yes, and it's not just all over New York, it's certainly all over the country, as evidenced by your experience. I think uh, WISE probably teach more people to swim than any other entity, in part because we've been doing it for so long, in part because of our, I think, stellar aquatics instructions programs, and in part because we know it's a really important critical life skill. So year over year, we are teaching more New Yorkers how to swim and how to access swim instruction and how to be safe around water. Um, and that is something that we have been engaged in for decades. And we do it through uh, partnerships with schools, partnerships with municipalities to enable early access. We do it through our own swim instruction programs at the WISE, and we do it with partnership with organizations throughout our cities and state. Well, when you think about uh, the governor's proposal, do any of the elements stand out to you to be particularly meaningful in terms of increasing swimming opportunities in the future? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to remember that we are at an inflection point in terms of aquatic safety, and uh, there's a crisis in lifeguard development. And so it is a great time for the governor to be putting attention on this issue and on the importance of swim instruction drowning prevention, and just general safety around water. That is an ongoing health issue. It's an ongoing public health issue. So the timing is right, and we appreciate the tension that she's putting on this. Part of that is really about ensuring that there are pools for people to participate in swim instruction, and that's the main focus of her proposal put forward, is to increase that access through the development of pools. And that $150 million that comes out of SWIMS is really focused on capital investments um, with a smaller allocation for lifeguard training and certification, but nearly all for municipalities to increase that SWIM access through capital development. So that is a really important element. At the same time, it's also important to make sure that we continue to focus on, do we have the pipeline for lifeguards? Do we have enough swim instructors? It's great to have pools. You have to be able to program them with swim instructors and with lifeguards. And so one of the things that we continue to advocate for, both on a city and statewide basis, is making sure that there are resources, that there are programs, that there are opportunities to really make sure that swim instruction, general safety around water, land-based instruction, lifeguard development are as important as the development of pools. Well, moving forward then, what do you see as the YMCA's role in implementing any elements of the governor's plan? Well, we're certainly going to be partners in helping to make sure that we're doing as much as we can around swim access. We in the city have identified a number of pools that are good candidates for redevelopment. And I know that that's a key part of that $150 million, again, is on the capital investment. So making sure that we can work with our municipal partners to recognize where those opportunities for reinvestment lie. Um, and I would say, generally speaking, continuing to advocate and call attention to the importance of that large category of aquatic safety and everything that it involves, right? It makes it ensure it involves making sure people are comfortable around water, that they know some of the basic skills around approaching water, that they are comfortable in the water, which means that they have been instructed on how to swim. It means making sure that family members participate in swim instruction. One of the things we find is that not everyone is comfortable getting in the water. Not everyone is comfortable admitting that they might not know how to swim. And so making sure that we're doing everything we can to encourage people to learn how to swim, um, to take advantage of the resources that are in their communities so that they can be safe around the water is going to continue to be a huge priority for us. So it's one thing for the state to prioritize 
training a, a potential lifeguards and trying to make that avenue more accessible and make being a lifeguard more attractive. But where do you actually get future lifeguards from? Yeah, it's an excellent question. And it's one of those things that you constantly need to be cultivating and developing what we call a pipeline of swim instructors and lifeguards. So we start with swim teams, especially swim teams in schools, because they're kids that know how to swim and are good swimmers. It starts with making sure that we're increasing swim opportunities so that people can see the progression of first I knew how to swim, then maybe I get more comfortable, then I understand the importance of lifeguarding. It's about recruiting kids to, to really important and really good first jobs. Most of our lifeguards throughout the state tend to be 18 to 24. They're great opportunities to come into the professional world and take responsibility and be helpful and important to communities. And so we're constantly out there working with our school partners, um, with our other organizations that work with kids to make sure people understand that those are opportunities. And I should say, it doesn't just end at 24, right? We're always looking for people who are interested in helping others, who enjoy the water, who want to learn new skills, who learn important life-saving skills um, to participate. But most of it really does involve both the comfort around water and developing that pipeline and making sure that at any given moment, we're thinking about the next three to five years. So at any given moment, we know that we've got kids who are learning to swim, that at some point are gonna be advanced swimmers, that we're taking those advanced swimmers and encouraging them to develop into lifeguards, that we're taking those lifeguards and encouraging them to build up their own networks to bring in more folks. One of the key opportunities for us and for other nonprofits across the state are those partnerships that Sharon mentioned around schools. So if we build partnerships with high schools that already have pools and kids that can basically swim, they can then be developed into lifeguard candidates as they get older. And by the time they're 16, 17, they can be lifeguards at both nonprofits and municipal pools. So that the opportunity to build those relationships with schools is extremely important to all of us. And is it a prerequisite that potential lifeguards look cool in sunglasses and have the ability to effortlessly swing a whistle around their fingers or is that not necessarily no uh, it's the other way around once someone... you become a lifeguard that just happens automatically which Excellent. is there's why an aura. we're encouraging that there's, every, an aura. Right? there's an aura that, that follows you wherever you go the coolness right. factor increases exponentially good to know good to clarify that so one of the things that stood out for a lot of people when the governor announced her plan was this idea of deploying pools in natural bodies of water essentially coming up with floating pools is that something that you guys have any experience with or any expectations of what that could actually consist of in the future yeah it's you know it is an innovative solution and we applaud any any new kind of innovation again that increases access to swim instruction and if there's a way to do it both economically and safely we are all for it i know that's part of the pilot is to think about how to do that with new partners who have been studying this so i think that where we can think imaginatively about increasing access is important i think it has to be done in concert with a reinvestment in existing pools, a real commitment to developing new municipal pools that can be used year round. One of the things that we have to take into consideration around floating pools is that they tend to be seasonal and swimming needs to be a year round focus. So we wanna do those things together. It's not just one or the other, it's making sure that we're using our natural resources creatively, that we're trying things that could be economical and safe and that we're continuing to, re to invest in those um, other opportunities to increase year-round access. Well, we've been speaking with the Sharons of the YMCA of Greater New York. They are Sharon Greenberger, President and CEO. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. And we've also been hearing from their Senior Vice President for Public Affairs, Sharon Levy. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Support for the Capitol Press Room provided by the New York State AFL-CIO, a federation of 3,000 unions fighting for working people by keeping New York State union strong. More information at unionstrongny.org. And by the New York State United Teachers, a statewide union of nearly 700,000 professionals in education and healthcare.